Welcome to iGaming Next. My name is Dylan Slaney. I'm the SVP of iGaming at SG Digital. Today, I want to take you through a journey about how we're using data and insight to really understand player experiences and player engagement in more depth. It's a part of the industry that's a real passion um, of mine. Um, fortunately, before I came to this industry, I spent eight years at Dunhumby, one of the leading data science companies, where understanding customer was part of their DNA. And today at SG Digital, we're building out the talent, the team, and the processes to put the player at the heart of every decision that we make. And that process starts with understanding players, knowing what they like, why they play, when they play, their interactions, making every experience unique, whilst providing safety for players to play responsibly. Data and insight forms the backbone of many great businesses. We talk a lot about Netflix, about PlayStation, about Xbox, about the war that we're in for um, you know, entertainment time and airtime from, from players. Um, and those companies are all built on the simple foundation that if I know the content that people like and want to consume, I can not only create and build it, but also be the platform of choice for people to consume content of all different types. And we are competing in the broader entertainment industry. It's important we understand that and learn what is happening in these industries and take those learnings um, and really put them into, um, into execution within our own brilliant and much-loved industry. Data and insight that players generate prevail through our organisation, not just for the standard business KPIs and performance metrics, but also part of our DNA on how we make all decisions. We want to go beyond the traditional use cases and really look deeper underneath what players are actually doing and the reasons why. How can we make the product experience um, even better? What content do players like and why? Who should we partner with to expand access to content for our operators and players in different jurisdictions and markets? And how ultimately um, do we put the player at the heart of every decision to create a better entertainment experience for the players tomorrow than they have today? And why do we think we're in a position to do this? Well, we have an amazing asset. Um, close to 13.3 you know, million players um, have played on our platform um, year to date, generating something like 26.4 billion game rounds. And you can see here, right, across different markets, um, we have um, a huge amount of players and a huge amount of rounds being generated, which give us a really unique data asset that we can create some really meaningful insights from. And every time a player plays, they create this digital footprint. Okay, they, they give us signals, um, they create timestamps, they create data points for us to use to really understand them in a better, um, in a better more 360 degree approach. And that's what we're trying to engineer. Okay, take all these data points together to really understand player behavior in a much more meaningful, richer way. And also these signals tell us um, when and why a player plays. And the, the, the identification of motivations, okay, so why does somebody do something? Why does a player play that game but not that one? Why do they wager on that game but not this one? Okay, are really important things for us to, um, to understand. And it's these motivations that are really important to think to how we really take the industry forward, not just for business growth, but also to tackle things like responsible gaming and to create the right and unique experiences for every player. And this data, when it creates that digital footprint or DNA um, around what games players like, which ones they don't, which ones they play, which ones they never return to, okay, are all great signals for us to understand. And it's these billions of different combinations of these DNA profiles that we want to understand to drive better decisions centered on the player. And I'm going to show you some examples of how these DNA profiles uh, are being used to really inform our decision making. We saw during COVID against one of our leading franchises, okay, a, a real substantial increase um, in player numbers. This wasn't driven by new releases of content or new distribution. It wasn't, it wasn't delivered by new operators coming onto our platform. What we saw for uh, one of the first periods um, of time was that it was how players were interacting with these games through marketing campaigns being acquired by operators during the, during the COVID period. Um, we saw this not just on our own brands, but also across the broad breadth of brands that, 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 we can, that we can see on our platform. And this franchise's role changed during COVID, okay, to help acquire and retain new customers. It has now created a new baseline for this, for this franchise. 
We also know that players aren't the same everywhere. Um, we know that because we've got that real unique size and of, our, of our data asset. We can see from here that across UK and European markets, players play different ga games. Yes, some of this is skewed by our distribution, but 12 million players is a pretty good sample size that I think any of us um, would like to get our hands on. Um, it also points to areas where we can find unique content. So here in Italy, for example, something like 22% of the volume that we're seeing is through bespoke Italian-focused content and also highlights gaps where partners might want to launch. And content in our industry is, is still king, and content is played globally, but we are seeing signs, perhaps due to the amount of content that players um, now um, have available, um, that they're acting well locally to different game types. And with an open gaming, um, we are paying more attention to that than ever before. Even with some of our key franchises, okay, we can see differences. Here is a, is a great example from one of our recent global gamer launches, um, Raging Rider Rampage. On the left, we have a US operator where 71% of players had played the existing Raging Rhino game before trying the new, which is a great conversion rate, adding a new experience for those players that love that, that franchise. And overall, when we look at the game, it was one in five players that had played the previous game that went on to play the new game. So four in five players were actually new to the franchise. So a really kind of like great stat to, I think, really illustrate how we can reward players um, through creating new content, but also find new players and to extend the life of games and franchises within our, within our industry. Monopoly, um, one of our key external franchises. We've had nearly 700,000 players play the franchise over the last 90 days. 70% of these players um, have also played other SG Digital content, and 50% have played content from our um, content partners. This gives us a real great insight into what games should come next for the Monopoly franchise. What do current players play? Uh, what new mechanics, what themes, what style of games? What other co-collaborations um, can we do? What other licensing opportunities like Monopoly Megaways uh, might make sense? And players are telling us that through the signals that they leave every time that they play a game on our platform. And whilst we all want to think that players play one game uh, and one brand, they don't. This is a great example of data from two jackpot brands, um, each with a family of titles. We have a cohort of 25% of players who love jackpots and are playing both brands. The other, to the other two cohorts like specific jackpot games from their, from their favourite brand. So not every jackpot player um, is the same. Here we see those that really like jackpots, the mainstay um, of their play, you know, playing games from, from, from different brands and enjoying that experience, and others. That really, that really like certain game types from certain brands, but really don't want to play any other, any other jackpot game other than their favorite games or game families. And we also in the industry see a lot of one-time play. This is a selection of new game launches across our platform and markets. The challenge here is we have a lot of players who play once. They, they try games, okay? And then don't go on to play a second, third, or fourth day. And that game doesn't come in their consideration set. This might be due to just the amount of content that's out um, in the market. Okay? We've seen a marked increase um, in the number of games that are now being um, offered for players uh, to play, to play go globally. And this is a challenge that I think as an industry we've got to really understand around the amount of time that goes into not only producing a game but launching a game when across a bunch of games, not just our games but also partner games as well, you know, northwards of 70% of players are only playing the game on the first day and then moving on. Is that because there's too much content? Is that because we're not giving you know, the games time? Is it because the games you know, aren't right for the, for the players? But we can see here, okay, to have nearly three quarters of players only playing you know, a game on the first day of launch or for, or for one day is something that I think we need, to, we need to understand in more detail. And we can't have a data and insights presentation without talking about mobile. We are a mobile first um, in this industry. Interestingly, what we see is only 40% of players uh, play actually on a mobile device, but it's when you get into bets placed that's really interesting. So while those players are playing on mobile and maybe also playing um, on desktop, 81% of bets that globally that we see are placed on a mobile device. I think we can truly say we are mobile first. And here, okay, that's when changes like iOS that are happening at the moment, we need to be mindful of that impact. Apple are a new regulator in our industry and with that comes new challenges. Building games with a mobile first mentality, capturing more in-game data, the perennial portrait versus landscape debate that we, are, that we all have. Um, all decisions that we can take when we truly analyze the signs and signals that players are telling us 
from the digital footprints they leave when they play our games. And regulation. Um, one of the key use, use cases today that we want to understand and really use our data and insight to make better decisions. You know, how will regulatory change impact player engagement and behaviour? Well, we can look at certain markets. Okay, we've seen huge shifts in, in player behaviour in places like Sweden um, and Germany. We know that the UK um, is looking at different um, max and min bet levels. And we can see here from our data, okay, over 6 million players, you know, being, being used to sort of like create the, the view that we can see here of rounds that are played at what sort of like state level and start to really, you know, make informed decisions. And we know that there's been some great data and analytics that's been, been provided already. We want to play a part um, in that. And we're more than happy to share these kind of like macro insights with, with, any, with anybody um, on the call. We strip out kind of like, you know, any operator or gameplay data. This is really just to give you a, a broader sense of maybe how the data that you're seeing um, is also resonated and is reflected in the, in the broader market. And we believe here, you know, if certain, if certain changes are made to min and max bet levels, that we could see, you know, in excess of, you know, a 20% impact on our industry um, in the UK. And regulation as industry, okay, we need to do a better job at using the combined data and insights that are generated to protect the most vulnerable players. We also know that millions of players worldwide play in our industry responsibly and we need to reward and encourage that. Seeing these insights is a great way for the industry to collaborate better and protect the industry we and players love. The more we can get on the front foot of regulation, which is needed, okay, to protect the most vulnerable in our industry, the more informed we can be about the decisions we, not regulators, uh, need to take. And data and insights are going to play a more pivotal role in this area than ever before. And just quickly, I want to share some insights on something that I talked about at last year's um, iGaming Next, okay, which was around Jackpot Wars. New innovation that's been launched in beta format with a, with a few operators, and we're seeing how players are engaging with this new format. Um, this product allowed players to go into a tournament to compete to win a jackpot prize, and we're seeing over 50% of players opt in um, with each tournament and over 70 players competing um, in each one of those tournaments. And we've also seen that 20% of Jackpot Wars players have also played one of our other Jackpot games. Again, showing synergy and crossover here that helps to drive deeper player engagement. And while this is early days, um, it shows the innovation that we are seeing in other verticals, things that we have seen in peer-to-peer -peer play with the likes of PlayStation and Xbox, you know, people playing with other people has a role to play in our industry. And it's again something through data and insight that we want to explore more over the coming months. And finally, there are many ways that today, across our industry, we are using data and insights to create better experiences for players. That will only increase over time. The more we understand about players' behaviour, the more we understand around the motivations, okay, the why and how different games uh, are played by players, the different roles that they play in that consideration set, the more unique we can make these experiences and the more responsible we can be to help protect the most vulnerable players within our industry. Putting players at the heart of every decision is good for them and for our industry as a whole. Stay safe and I look forward to seeing you all soon in person.